be me, last summer, be wanting to complete stalker challenge, abandon cement barge beached on a sandbar on wooded coastline, seems like the perfect place to camp, brought a WASR, two magazines, all the magazines I had at the time, was poor, went to check out this barge, it was pretty sick, there was barnacles growing on some of it, so I assumed that, at high tide, it was partially submerged. It had a cargo hold and an upper deck. There were two portholes in the upper deck with rusty ladders that descended down into the cargo hold. Decided to camp on the beach where the sandbar connects with dry land because I didn't want to drown in my sleeping bag if high tide completely covered the vessel somehow. Explored the barge just a little more first. Noticed some rusted out metal stuff and a little square pool on the upper deck. Reached down into the water Pulled out a rifle casing. Recognized it as a nugget food casing. Wait till Kay hears about this. Finally finish up closely examining all the cool old rusted bits of the barge. Valves, moorings, etc. Head over to the beach to make camp. Pace it off at 60 or so yards from the barge. Not quite stalker challenge legal, but safety first, right? What's 10 yards? Make a little fire pit with rocks for shiggles. Put driftwood in it. Whipped out the zippo, lit her up. Looked at my watch, it was about four. Pick related kind of shows the shoreline that I was camped on. Pick related also shows the part of the upper deck where the barge was split in two. Anyhow, sitting on the beach in front of weak ass fire, WASR laying by my side. Pull out a green plastic dollar store harmonica no idea how to play it, just make noises with it. Start doing the Jaws theme with it, for shiggles. Laugh at my own cleverness. Try to do something like the National Anthem. Hear laughter coming from the trees. Stop playing, look over. Hello? Laughter continues, same tone as before. It kind of sounds like me, come to think of it. Begin to smell something kind of metallic. Smell is kind of salty, too. I was camped by the shore, mind you, so it was already a little salty. But this smell was saltier than normal. It's still only five, not quite sundown. I'm scanning the tree line, but I don't see anything. Reach for my harmonica to resume playing. Realize the salty, metallic smell kind of resembles blood. In fact, it strongly resembles the smell of blood. Same laugh continues from the woods. Begin to put two and two together. Chamber around in the WASR. Hello! Sit there, staring at the woods for a long ass time. Nothing. Cook my beans on the fire, glancing over at the woods periodically. Just as the sun is going down, hear, Hello! Come at me from the woods. That sounds a lot like me. Nope the fuck out of there, JPEG. Packed my shit in a flash, ran to the barge. Pick related was taken two weeks prior while hiking with a buddy. We spent all of five minutes there and continued our way. Anyways, darted to the barge, leapt inside, frantically climbed up onto upper deck, jumped across the crack onto the bow, went prone, aimed my WASR back out across the sandbar. Eyes are golf ball wide. Sit like that for a while. Check watch periodically. Just as the sun is finishing setting, realize I'm going to want some fire. Go down onto the sandbar, rifle slung and at the ready, gather up a little driftwood. Light a rather weak fire on the deck. Make one last trip just at the beginning of dusk. Find some good wood. Fire achieves respectable size. Spend the first few hours of the night, rifle shouldered, prone, aiming down the sandbar. Remember that several of my relatives suffer various mental illnesses. You probably just hallucinated that shit, Anon. You probably need to go get yourself checked out, I tell myself. Then I hear the heavy breaking of brush from the coastline. And something muffled blows to me on the breeze. Laughter. And a pretty, unpleasant smell. Oh shit. Hold my rifle tight. Point it threateningly at the coast. It's pretty well dark by now. Remember, I brought a flashlight. Go over to my pack, laying on the deck by the stern. I get it. 
come back, shine it down along the sandbar. See something glint as I sweep. Swing beam back onto the gleaming thing. Two little dots. Eyes. Fucking eyes. Something big and dark is attached to them. It's pretty damn tall. It's just standing there, halfway down the sandbar. Can't see it well. Low battery. And it was kind of far away. Try to tell myself that it's just an animal. That's one big ass animal. Is it a bear? Human eyes don't glow in the dark, so it can't be a person. Can't hurt to shoot at it, right? Chamber around. A live round is ejected and skitters across the deck. I already chambered one on the beach. I'm a dumbass. Go prone, take aim, touch one off. If only I had a flash hider instead of a slanted break. Blinded for what felt like an eternity. Blinking frantically in hopes of restoring my sight the whole time. Get to the point where I can see again. Frantically shine my mag light all up and down the sandbar. No eyes. Maybe I scared it off. Hear the crunching of gravelly sand below me. Somebody says, Hello? Once again. It sounds a hell of a lot like me. In full panic mode. Stand on the railing. Point WASR over the side. Mag dump. Hear and see nothing for a good long while. Settle in. Got my legs in a sleeping bag. Head and arms out with WASR aimed at the portholes that lead from the hold up onto the deck. A couple of hours pass. My eyelids get heavy. Hear that laugh again. This time, it's below me. Nearly wet myself in sheer terror. Begin focusing intently. Hear small waves lapping up against the side of the barge. The tide has risen. After ten minutes or so, begin to hear sloshing in the hold below. Something's walking around down there, and it's beginning to fill with water. There's only one direction this can go now. Up. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Hello? Scream. Shut the fuck up! Shove my WASR down the porthole. Blind fire like a madman. There goes all of my ammo. Heart is hammering. Slowly back away from the porthole. Hear something clanging against metal. It's climbing the ladder. Unsheathe my bayonet. I don't know how that thing fit through the porthole, but it did. Fight or flight engages. There's nowhere to run to. Charge, screaming. It happened in a flash. The bayonet plunged into the thing. A heavy paw, or something, bitch slapped me across the chest, and I went tumbling off the barge into the drink. I now have no WASR, and I'm in the water. Play dead, lay on my back. Hope it doesn't see me. Heart is still pounding uncontrollably. Not worried about hypothermia, because it's June. Slowly drift away from the current. See a hulking silhouette next to the fire as I drift off. Current dumps me on a beach a few miles east. I hike home, and I never go near that place again. Be me. Camping in the woods with my longtime best friend for a week. He's got around 50 acres that spills into straight forest. Just the basics. Tin food, water, that kind of shit. Sleeping in the bed of my truck because poor. No money for tent or camper. First day goes well enough. Talked a day away while we fished. Head to bed. Kept truck off in case of rain. Sleep like a little baby. Wake up around 7 or 8. Debate getting a fire going to cook breakfast. Friend tells me he's going to start prepping food, and I need to get firewood. Walk off into woods with shitty little Coleman's hatchet. Start breaking down little dead trees. Get an armful of wood before I head back. Super uneasy feeling, like when you fuck up and you know it. Like someone took everything out of my stomach and replaced it with primal fear. Sketched out, but think nothing of it. Head back to camp with wood and spooks. Cook breakfast. Consisted of warmed up canned ravioli. Not buying ice in a cooler so I can eat fucking eggs in the woods. Eat our fill, pack up leftovers, and head out hiking. Made sure to pack stuff up, back into the truck and lock it. Hike for about an hour, stop in a clearing and enjoy the view. Nothing but long grass in the middle and trees all around us. Enjoy the air, head back into the woods. 
Hiking back, food sitting like a fucking brick in my stomach. Walk for what feels like hours. Oh shit, what time is it? Check watch, only around two or so. Not bad, left at 11. Wait, shouldn't we be at camp? Why does nothing look familiar? Panic mode engaged. Freak out to friend, gonna die in the woods. He says we're fine, camp shouldn't be too far. Walk for maybe 15, 20 more minutes or so. Oh shit, there it is. No problems here. Unlock truck, turn on radio to cool nerves. Not too far out, shitty signal but enough to get something. Relax for a couple hours, talking about love life and shit. No girl for my own, but whatevs. Don't want ravioli again, go fishing for dinner. Down at pond from yesterday trying to catch something worth eating. Nothing so far, the entire pond seems dead still. Whatever, it's the evening. Lots of critters that disturb the water. Managed to catch two or three little fish. Not sure what type, but no bigger than my hand. Bring back to camp, enjoying how quiet it is out. Get back and start skinning and deboning the fish. Feel uneasy, but think nothing of it. Chomping down on the fish, can't stop thinking about how still the pond was. Friend breaks the silence. Shit, man, you were gone for a while. Not a lot of luck today. I swear to God, it was like there was no fucking fish in the pond there today. Spooky as fuck. The entire forest seemed kind of quiet today. Sit and ponder for a bit. Did I hear any birds on the way back? No, I don't think I did. Was there any kind of wind at all? Any breeze? Shit, I don't think there was any of that either. Not liking this one bit. Don't want to pussy out on friend by calling it quits this early. Whatever, I'm just tired. Fix mattress in the bed of my truck for the night. Make a little fire and start burning shit to pass the time. It just doesn't feel right. Ask friend if he's ever gone this far back here. Yeah, I used to come back here with my dad all the time. Little backstory here. My friend's parents died about a year ago. Super fucking loaded. Left the house to him and money to other family. Ask if he had any spooks back this far. Says nothing too bad. The worst was this hermit that lived about two or three miles out past the property line. He didn't bother them, and they didn't bother him. Shrug it off, head to bed. Wake up around two or three, shivering like a motherfucker. It's bad. Laying under the blanket for a bit. Decide fuck it, I'm gonna walk around to try and wear myself out and fall back asleep. Climb out of bed, careful not to wake friend. Not a dumbass, so I make sure to keep tent in view. Walking in place, and enjoy the stars and crickets. Hear something off in the distance. Is my mind playing tricks on me? Strain my ears to listen better. Crickets, crickets, crickets. Silence. Ungodly moaning and muffled screaming. I rush to wake up my friend. Immediately tell him to be quiet and listen. He hears it too. Can't be too far off with how muffled it sounds. Imagine covering your mouth with a pillow and screaming into it, like pure screams, enough to crack your voice. Now play that far off into the woods, just barely loud enough to hear. Stomach is a swirling mess of emotions and shit, not sure what to do. Friend tells me they've got loads of coyotes out here. Maybe one of them got a hold of a fox and killed it. Yeah, maybe. Sounds vaguely sentient though, like it's pleading. Lay in bed listening to the screams for what feels like forever, before finally passing out. Wake up next morning exhausted, mind cloudy, can't think to save my life. Go take a piss out in the woods, crunching leaves. Hairs on the back of my neck stand up, fight or flight activating. It's my friend getting sticks to make another fire. Well, what happened to the firewood from before? Up and left, must have burned through it all. Wait, shit, I get cell reception out here. Remember friend telling me about the fox screams last night? Google fox scream human. Videos of vixen screams. Watch them. They sound close, but something about it seems too animal. Like they didn't have that fear behind it. Chalk it up to just being tired. The rest of the day was the usual stuff. Start fire, cook food, hike a bit, swim in pond some and make bed for the night. Laying in bed, refusing to fall asleep for fear of getting gutted by skinwalkers or something. 
Hear the crickets again. Something about it is just so calming to me. About to fall asleep when I hear it. Muffled screams like before, but only clearer. I swear on my life, I can hear something behind it. Can make out the stronger parts of the word, like a drawn out ah noise or something. Eyes are welling up with tears. I don't want to die, man. Sit in bed until sun comes up. Decide, fuck it. We got today and tomorrow, and we're gone. I want to know what this noise is. Tell friend I want to head out back towards the opening that we found. Seems uneasy about it, but agrees. Walking out. No talking between the two of us. Lifelong friends. This shit doesn't happen often. Always something to talk about. Around halfway there, friend falls and twists ankle pretty bad. God, fuck, why now? Help him back to the truck instead of in passenger seat. Wait with him to make sure he's okay. Gradually gets more and more pasty. Cold skin, like a fever feeling. Fuck, that's not good. Sit with him and talk. I just want my bro to be okay. No good food to comfort, just ravioli and potted meat. Lap of luxury. Talk over our options. He can barely walk, so it wouldn't be easy getting him from A to B. And I really want to check out that noise from earlier. Fuck man, what do I do? Fuck it. I have this unexplainable pull towards this. Tell him I'll be right back and book it out. Sprinting through forest, I need to know what this is. Get to clearing in maybe half an hour. So not too bad concerning the distance from camp. Again, no birds, no ambient noise. Just pure, piercing silence. Don't feel safe in the slightest, but I want answers. Cross cleaning into other section of woods. Much denser, light peaks through, but in very small spurts. Kind of like a basement in the evening, seeable, but dark. Walking super carefully, I don't fuck with no spirits. See a little calm about 30 feet out, go check it out. Blue rags, long stringy black hair, and an ungodly smell. Pull rags out. They're made of denim. Okay, fuck this shit. Burial mounds covered in tattered clothes and hair. Nope the fuck out. Running through clearing. Stop to catch breath. Now to get a scale of things. The clearing was maybe about a football field and a half. And I am not a runner. Winded and gasping. All of a sudden, hear that scream as clear as day. Whip head around. Tall, gaunt woman-like figure standing in tree line. I freeze up. This is how it ends. Feel intense wave of calm wash over me. I am safe here. I want to go to her. Learn who she is. Very beautiful and seemingly angelic in nature. All but forget about sick and dying bro. Fuck, I need to get back. Turn around to run and I hear it. Branches snapping. Grass rustling. Oh sweet dick, I'm gonna die here. Run faster than a fucking Olympian athlete. Legs taking me Mach 7 down through my trail. Entire time nothing but sobbing and moaning from behind me. Gradually slows down, like I got a tether and kept going. Stopped to catch my breath about 5 minutes from camp. My back's towards a tree. Don't want no ghost bitches sneaking up on me. Gasping and panting. Feel hand on my shoulder. It's bro. Freak out. Start talking a million miles a minute. See this ungodly fear in his eyes. He says nothing to me. Walk back to camp, scared shitless. Bro won't say anything to me as we pack up. Car drive home. Spend the night at my place, cause he says he wants time away from his home. Up until maybe two, talking each other down. All of a sudden, bursts into hysterics. A blabbering fool, sounds like a toddler learning to speak. Calm him down, ask him what the fuck he's doing. Says he got spooked after the second night of screaming. He had heard it too. Set his phone to record audio during our sleep. Skimmed through it in the hour that I was gone. Says he got through about four hours of cherry-picked sound when he saw something in the corner of his eye. Super fast blur, long arms, skinny body, and dark hair. Said he heard some kind of unholy laughter as it left, like it was playing a game. It ran in my direction. He couldn't do anything, twisted ankle and sick. Kept listening to the audio. Around what would be 5am, 
hears rustling and recording. Uneven gait, like step, 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 step. Giggling, almost like a child. Stops after a while. Rattling and the sound of my truck bed opening. Rustling shortly afterwards and what sounds like cooing. Like a mother soothing a child. Zipper unzipping. Cloth tearing. Bed latching. Sprinting. Check backpack. I'm missing a pair of jeans. Wait, just the fuck? Cairn in the forest. Fucking clothes. Inexplicable pool. Oh god. Whatever that thing was made a fucking burial site for me. Why? Why? Fucking why? Freak out. Lock doors. Close blinds. Sit in bedroom with friend. Sit there until morning. And drives back to house. Entire place is torn up. Glass shattered. Furniture torn. Doors are scratched. It was looking for us here. Not enough money in the world would get friend to stay here, and not enough to get me to let him. Pack what little he can salvage, and bring him back to my house. This was maybe a month ago? Dude's been staying here while we try to figure out what to do. Maybe just tear down the place and sell the land? No way we're going to try and fix it all up to sell it. Still have no clue what that woman was, but I know for a fact that it wasn't anything that I want to remember. I'll try to answer any questions as best as I can. Another user finally came to explain everything. This whole story. OP, you better thank fuck every goddamn day that you still breathe. You saw that wayfish woman by the cairn. Wayfish woman made eye contact with you. You felt calm, at ease, compelled to approach her, to approach the gravesite. But your friend who twisted his ankle minutes ago was alone in the truck. That memory, that thought, was enough to distract you just enough to snap out of it. Once you turned away, the fear came back and you were pursued. The moment your friend lost his footing and twisted his shit up, that was the fork in the path of your fate that led you to not becoming some creature's fucked up torture doll and never leaving those woods again. This was the big tip off. Step. 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 Giggling. Stops, rattling and truck bed opening, rustling and what sounds like cooing, like a mother soothing a child, zipper unzipping, clothes tearing, bed latching, and sprinting. Basically, the wayfish woman creeping up to your truck at night, giggling, opens up the bed where you and your friend are sleeping. The rustling was her starting to sift through your stuff. The cooing, you woke up or were going to wake up, and she did it. The thing where she makes you calm and at ease, and you fell back asleep. You almost woke up to the sight of that thing hunched over in your trunk bed with you, looking at you. In fact, you fucking might have done just that, but the relaxing thing made you go back to sleep and forget it. It took your pants because they seemed valuable to you and smelled a lot like you. It knew you were curious. It knew you would look for them. It led you to the grave that it made for you. It was waiting for you there. It started to draw you in by doing the relaxing thing again, and you almost walked right into your own grave. It didn't plan on your friend getting fucked up. It didn't plan on you remembering him and turning around. It was going to take you, and then take your friend. You fucking got away by a fucking hair. Storytime X. This shit is all true. B20, in college in Colorado. Live near foothills, lots of cool wooded areas to drive to that aren't too far from campus. Have friend, Simon, who is pretty into drugs. Occasionally he would ask me to do shrooms with him. One time he asks me, tell him I don't feel like doing them but I'll babysit him and just smoke weed or whatever. He says that's cool. Get a group together one Saturday and drive up to the flat irons packing a bag of shrooms and a shit ton of weed. Five of us total, me, my friend Ian, and a girl that I was into at the time, Sarah, are babysitting. Simon and our friend Keegan are the ones doing the shrooms. Park car in one of those hiking area parking lots. No other cars. Seems pretty deserted. Middle of the day. At first we thought that was good, but then Ian checked the weather forecast and said that there was a chance of rain. Our dumbasses didn't check the weather before doing this. 
too late now. It's still pretty nice out at this point, only like 2pm, so we head up into the hiking trail and go until we find a nice open area. We are literally like 5 minutes from the car. Figure we don't have to go far considering it doesn't look like anybody else will be hiking here anyway, and we're at a pretty remote place. The babysitters start smoking out of this pipe, and the other two discuss how they're going to eat the shrooms. Literally right as Keegan pops his shrooms, Simon remembers that he left his phone in the car. Keegan was a first timer, so he was kind of paranoid and just wanted to stay where he was. I offer to go with Simon to the car. He just says it's cool, just chill and he'll be right back. We all don't really think much of it because we're not too far from the car. Me, Ian, and Sarah are smoking and Keegan is just chilling waiting for the shrooms to hit him, laughing it up. Ten minutes later, Simon still hasn't come back. After about 20 minutes, we realize he should be back by now. Sarah considers going and looking for him. He probably just had to take a dump or something. We keep smoking. We start to worry a little. I'm about to go to the car to find him. 30 minutes after he left, we finally see him come up the trail. Walking super slowly, like he was being really careful where he stepped or something. Doesn't say anything as he approaches. We kind of interrogate him. He says he just got his phone and nothing else. We can't get more than 10 words out of the guy. And he's usually the most talkative motherfucker I've ever known. Like literally everything was a one word response or a shrug. And he doesn't smile at all. Kind of just go fuck it because Keegan is starting to feel his trip. So we turn our attention to him. Simon no longer seems to have an interest in the shrooms. Keegan is acting hilarious, describes shit that he sees to us, laughs at everything, fascinated by tree bark and shit. We're all laughing like idiots at him. All but Simon. I don't really bother asking him if he's going to take the half bag of shrooms. I just kind of figure he started feeling sick or something. It's been about an hour and a half now and the overcast is getting heavier. Probably going to rain soon. Me and Ian are discussing where we could go inside with a tripping Keegan when Sarah just screams really loud and points out a tree a little ways away from us. What the fuck, why are you screaming? She says she saw some huge furry animal go behind the tree. None of us believe her since we didn't hear or see shit. She says it moved totally silently, but she swears that she saw it. He and I are kind of calling bullshit, but all of a sudden, Simon starts saying that we should go check it out. You fucking serious? We all really want to leave now because of the coming rain, but Simon keeps insisting that we go look at whatever the fuck Sarah saw. We kind of argued about this for what seemed like absurdly long time. He kept saying we should all go look, but not giving a good reason why. We said it was probably a bear or something that could maul us, and he would just say, yeah, it won't hurt us. I remember very specifically him saying that it wouldn't hurt us. He seemed so confident about that. Like he already knew what animal it was or something. Keegan is pretty much not moving from his little spot, and we can't just leave him there. I'm pretty high at this point too, and really don't want to move either. Ian is finally like, alright dude, if I go over there and check it out with you, can we just go? Simon agrees, and the two of them go out and kind of leave our view in our little clearing as they go towards the tree that Sarah pointed out. We lose sight of them, Keegan is seriously noping out, like on the verge of tears and tripping really bad. Sarah is trying to calm him down. My phone rings, which startled the fuck out of all of us and I pull it out. It's Simon's phone calling me. What the fuck? Answer it and hear his voicemail message immediately. You know like the message I would play if I had called him and he hadn't answered. And I swear on my life that I didn't pocket dial him or anything. It was an incoming call and my ringtone was going off and everything. But his voicemail message played. Seriously what the fucking out now. Hang up and start calling Simon and Ian's names. They don't answer. Feel raindrops coming down. Trees aren't giving that much cover. Suddenly hear a weird moaning sound coming from the direction that they walk towards. And not too far away from us. Kind of like a dog whimpering at first, but then it got louder and louder until it was a full-on wail. Sounded like something laughing, like a cackling noise. Okay, time to leave. Sarah and I have to lift Keegan up. 
He's pretty much in hysterics now. Start running towards car. I try calling Ian as we run. His phone is off or dead. We get to car. Keegan gets in the back seat, seriously tripping out. Sarah's still trying to calm him down. I'm outside the car looking for any sign of the other two. See them only about two minutes later coming down the trail. Except they're both doing that super slow walk now, and both seem way too calm. When they finally get to us, I ask them what the fuck happened, and ask if they heard that noise. Both of them say they didn't hear anything. Both of them say they didn't find any animal. And both of them deny calling me, or receiving a call from me. They answer every question with one or two fucking words, and they don't seem to be phased by the fact that the other three of us are freaked the fuck out. It's starting to really rain, and we're out in the open, so I just really want to go home, so we all get in the car. Ian and Simon sit next to each other in the back and barely talk on the ride back. Pretty silent overall. Keegan is like, huddled up, still tripping. I take us back to campus and tell everyone that I'll just take them home and watch Keegan by myself for a while until he comes down, which would be hours from now. Simon and Ian both want to stay with us. They don't say fucking shit besides that they don't want to be taken home. They want to stay with us longer. I tell them that I just want to go home at this point, coming down from my high. Sarah agrees. In the end, I agreed to drop them both off at Ian's apartment. I thought it was weird that Ian didn't want to go home. He and Simon were never that great of friends. Had never been there before. Needed directions. Ian is being super fucking unhelpful, like he doesn't know where he's going to his own apartment. I end up having to use my own smartphone to navigate where I am. Notice that neither Ian or Simon take out their smartphones the whole time. Finally find the place, and they all get out without saying shit. Don't even thank me or anything. Sarah and I just kind of have a huge freak out after they're all gone, and discuss how surreal the whole thing was. Discuss how Ian and Simon weren't acting like themselves at all, and making sure that the noise we heard wasn't just our imaginations. We both heard the exact same thing. Both describe it as a cackling, didn't sound human at all. Later after I drop Sarah off, find Simon's phone in the front seat. On the way there, he was in the front. On the way back, he was in the back seat. In other words, he never got his phone from the car when he went back for it. Check phone call record. Outgoing call to me. I still have Simon's phone, and he hasn't made any attempt to contact me to get it back. This all happened a couple weekends ago. I figured maybe he was busy with finals and stuff, but now finals are over, and he still hasn't said a word to me. I'm kind of scared to give it back to him. I am friends with his roommate, who tells me that Simon is barely ever home anymore. He's always at Ian's apartment. Like, he'll just leave and sometimes won't come back until the next day, and then for only a few hours. When asked, he just says he's hanging out at Ian's. I'm really freaked out, X. What the hell happened to my friends? Okay, X. I've been wanting to tell you this for a while. For some background, I work in a patrol station located on the highway. Mostly night shifts, from 3pm to midnight. So, I'm used to the weird, the creepy, and, well, the downright paranormal. But, this... Normal shift, people coming and going. It's about 7, things are dark, and store is slowing down a bit. Behind console area, look to my left and lock eyes, not that I could, mind you, with a woman? Frail, thin, elderly, with wrinkled skin and giant fly-eyed sunglasses on, that cover half her face. Immediately get the jitters from her. She walks slowly to the door. I had to manually make it open to let her in, as the auto doors didn't even pick her up. Makes her way to the console, stares at me, can't tell, still wearing those creepy sunglasses. Can you come outside and take a look at my car? I think something's wrong. Voices soft in volume, but deep and resonating, like I felt it more than I heard it. Decline, explain policy with leaving as only staff on site. Okay then. She walks off to the toilet. Now here's where alarm bells start going off. Serving other customers, stragglers here and there. She comes out of the bathroom after five minutes. 
walks over to me again. There's no toilet paper. Could you come get me some? Alarm bells. Something in my head says not to go out there. Get some staff toilet paper from behind console. Here you go, ma'am. Her demeanor is sour, or as far as I can tell with those fucking sunglasses. Okay. She walks back into the toilet. About another five minutes, she walks back out and wanders around the shop. I watch her and notice she flicks her head in my direction every now and then, like scanning me. She walks to the coffee machine, then calls out to me. Her voice is louder this time, but it feels more like a knife this time, shrill and freezing. There's no milk in here. Could you replace it? I'd like a coffee. I know I should do it, but fuck. Every something is fucking up alarm in my body and brain was screaming not to. Decline and say I can't leave the console at this hour of the night. She gets visibly annoyed, saying how shitty my customer service is. She threatens to contact my manager if I don't come out and change the milk. Decline and apologize, even offer the manager's number. She tries three more times to get me out over the next 20 minutes. Finally gives up and walks off, glaring at me through the windows as she rounds the shop out of sight. Rest of shift goes by without a hitch. No creepy things, surprisingly mellow and normal shift. Still have sense of dread in my stomach. Swap over and leave at 12.30 in the morning, walking to my car about 50 meters in the parking lot. As I get closer, the fucking glasses, scarf, and gloves that she was wearing were folded neatly, the glasses resting on top in a pile on the ground by my driver's side door. Look around, sense of dread intensifying. Quick as a flash, I unlock my car, jump in, and lock it again. No time to relax, start car, and gun it out of there. Never been so fearful in my life. That sense of dread never left. I got home and needed a few drinks before I could loosen up enough to even consider sleep. Surprised there aren't more stories about cornfields. There was this one. Gillespie Cornfield outside of Perry. Every Halloween, going a long ride with my friends from high school to Gillespie Field. There was a path through the corn wide enough for perhaps a tractor that led to a large circle. Not quite like a crop circle, but it sure gave off that sort of vibe. B-17, Halloween 2010. Lots of marine friends and hunter friends this year. Friends of friends this year. Huge ass fucking party. We eventually had to start pulling the cars out of the circle because it was getting to be too crowded with six cars worth of people. It's getting to be two in the morning. People starting to drift out. About 20 people left in all. Hey Anand, come get some of this beer. At age 17, you can imagine I was pretty thrilled to be allowed in on the older kids' games and all that. There was a super hot chick, Tina, Trina, I don't remember, who was all over me. Drunk as a fish in a whiskey barrel, but all over me. Too shy to initiate anything, but I did get to see her boobs because she took her top off. Dwindled down to 10 or so people, me, 500 friends, 3 marine friends, and 2 civilians, not including me. Let's make a fucking bonfire. Ten minutes later, there's a huge fire pit going, and we're dancing around it pretending to be Native Americans doing a ritual, laughing and having a good ass time. No big deal, right? Hush washes over everyone. We all got the same rush of sudden unease and anxiety. Everybody freezes, more or less in the positions that we'd been dancing in. It's goofy as shit, but nobody dares to make a sound. Only sounds are the sounds of the giant fire in the pit. Standing around for almost a minute before somebody whispers, What happened to all the crickets and shit? No wind, no crickets, no birds, no nothing. So we stop dancing, thoroughly put off, and my buddy Joseph, a hunter, goes, Guys, I'ma go get my rifle. Murmur of agreement, the other hunters break off to go with Joseph and grab their shit. Mostly pistols and knives besides Joe. Marine buddies, Kate, Samuel, and Ed, sit down in what I can roughly describe as a perimeter sort of a thing around me and the other non-training folks. At this point, we're too nervous and anxious to talk. We're barely breathing. There's not a noise, just a fire pit's crackling and a slight rustle in the corn. And it's starting to get a little disconcerting. 
We sort of stuck close together and kept wide worried eyes on the stalks. Kate says, something's not right. Mutual agreement again, but nobody can put a finger on it. Ed sucks in a breath and everybody jumps a bit and looks over at him. If the wind is gone, what the fuck is making the corn stalks rustle? I swear to God, I nearly pissed myself right the fuck there. We're all about five seconds and a sneeze away from needing a change of clothes when Joe comes back, white as a sheet and alone. Joe's pulling the bolt back on his rifle and sprinting back to the campfire circle. Tosses his pistol to Ed. Joe, what the fuck happened? You look like you saw Sam's mom. Joe sort of glares at Ed and then hisses, Don't you fucking joke right now. There's something in the corn. You what, mate? There's something in the corn. I'm not fucking around. Now, see around there, we're used to big dogs, large crows, even the occasional oversized cat. So everybody sort of gave Joe this slanty-eyed, the fuck are you saying, sort of look, like he's trying to freak everybody out more. We keep trying to get him to tell us where the others are, what happened to the other four that he went off with. Says they stayed at the cars to protect them. Rustling in the corn, Joe immediately wheels and takes a shot, right next to my fucking ear. Immediately, feelings of fear and anxiety intensify. Some sort of low, whimpering noise is coming out of the corn now. Joe is gibbering like a fucking drunk, muttering incoherently. I'm about to take the rifle from him when I notice that he's got some sort of black slime smeared on his pant leg. Then, I nearly shot myself again. Because what crawled out of the corn was not a dog. Not in the strictest sense, I guess. It was shambling sort of awkwardly, with what looked like a broken leg, maybe a dislocated shoulder. It looked like it had, at some point in time, been some sort of hound dog, a black or dark brown bloodhound. There was chicken wire wound around its neck like a noose, and it was coated in flies. There was black sludge dripping from its jowls, and oozing out of a bullet hole right near its right eye, which was itself drooling that same black crap like tears. Joe lost his fucking mind at this point. Sam and I had to wrestle the rifle away from him. No more green text. It's hard for me to keep up. This shit still gives me the shakes. It kept shambling out of the corn towards us, wheezing and spitting that black shit onto the ground. The flies numerous enough that I could almost hear them buzzing from across the clearing. Joe was fucking losing his mind, collapsed on the ground, and was trying to go fetal as me and my marine friends tried to haul him away. The dog just kept walking, and as it kept coming, it dragged something else out of the corn behind it, attached to the chicken wire wound around its neck. It took a second for me to piece it together in the light of the fire but attached to the end of this morbid fucking umbilical cord was a beating heart. Like a bear-sized, still-bleeding, leaking heart, thumping away and leaking that black sludge shit. The flies were having a field day with it. The dog had no eyes for us. It was staring directly at the fire, like it was memorized or something. It dragged itself off kilter towards the fire, wheezing and spitting and sobbing, the heart beating excitedly on the chicken wire behind it. Its back legs were mangled, and it sort of dragged itself along on its front legs and one back leg. The fucking weird thing is, as it got closer to us, I swear to God I thought I could hear some sort of words every time the dog wheezed and whimpered and cried. I didn't stick around to listen. Nobody else did either. We grabbed Joe and fucking beat feet back to where the path to the cars were, making a wide berth around a dog and its cargo. Before I left, I had to watch. I am pretty sure the others had the same feeling because they weren't very far ahead of me when the show was over. I stopped and watched as it dragged itself, heaving and coughing, closer to the fire. The flies didn't even veer away when it stuck its head into the fire. It burned like someone had tossed a tire in there, and it stunk something fucking fierce. 
I just had to watch because the dog didn't stop moving when it had been engulfed by the pit. The chicken wire kept moving, dragging the heart into the flames after the dog until they were both gone. And the only way anybody could have known it was there was a trail of black sludge underground and the smell of burning rubber. We were halfway home when I finally looked over at Joe. There was something that had been bothering me since the thing had gotten close enough to us for me to finally hear it. I asked Joe what it had said to him because I was almost positive that was why he'd been so fucking freaked out. It had been next to him in the corn and he'd heard it speaking to him. At first I thought maybe I was wrong because he gave me this weirded out glare and he wouldn't say anything. Then he took a deep breath and he leaned over to me and he whispered the sentence into my ear. Come with me. I'll bring you home. And for a second, I felt very cold because that was what I had heard too. This is a story of a guy I met in the woods and a few friends of his. I can't guarantee anything as to its accuracy. I'm just going on what he told me to be true. Be friend and a couple buddies. Head out on the High Line Trail in Utah's mountains for a week. Have enough cars in the group so as to be able to park one at each end of the trail. Everybody is excited to be out in the mountains together. Not long before weird things start happening. It starts out with things like hiking poles and backpacks end up at opposite sides of camp to where people had left them. Everybody's boots are upside down in the morning. They hang their food bags on certain trees at night but find them tied to certain other trees in the mornings. Most people brush the stuff off as animals or someone in their friend group getting a midnight snack or something. Weirder and weirder shit starts happening. My friend wakes up to find muddy handprints all over the inside of his tent fly, in between the inner tent and the fly. As they're hiking, they lose the trail only to backtrack and find large, freshly cut branches and clever disguise laid over the actual trail. People are starting to think that they're getting stalked. What really starts freaking people out is waking up to find their tents rearranged in their campsite. The stakes of the non-freestanding tents look like they've all been undisturbed, but the tents are all in different places around camp. Nobody has any idea how their tents could have been all moved around and in some cases apparently broken down and re-pitched, with none of them noticing or waking up. Next night, they decide to keep watch in three-hour shifts. Everyone is on edge. Watchmen get thick branches, tie knives to the ends, and arm themselves with bear mace. The first half of the night, nothing happens. Then it's my friend's turn to stand watch. He's got his camera, because he figures the flash can illuminate wide areas if something comes close. It doesn't matter though, because he falls asleep just before dawn, and nothing happens that night. Next morning, somebody asks him why he was taking pictures the last night. My friend freezes, slowly takes out his camera, and checks the memory. There's pictures of everybody in the group sleeping, including himself. By following a creek a little ways upstream, they are able to find the trail which someone recognizes as being not too far from the campsite. They only have 12 miles to go before they get to the trailhead, but it's early afternoon and they're doubtful that they can finish their trip at that same day. Reaching their campsite, they find all of their gear shredded in pieces. Apparently only one backpack was unharmed. They find where their food had been hung, scooped up as much as they could save from where it was scattered on the ground. Somebody luckily finds the car keys and they run the rest of the way back, getting lost several times, but reaching the trailhead before dark. When they finally get to the trailhead, everyone is too exhausted to make camp or do any driving, so all six of them just pile into the car, lock the doors, and fall asleep. A knock on the window wakes them up early next morning. 
It's the police, and the cop wants to know what these people are doing in a closed area. As they try to explain the situation, the cop tells his own story. The entire entrance to the forest had been closed down for days due to abnormal animal activity. My friend is getting suspicious on why the police are handling the closure and not the forest rangers. He asks as much. Cop goes quiet and looks away. Very awkward moment, which is interrupted by one of my friend's hiking companions in the car. He notices that there are about a dozen other cars in the parking lot, but they all have flat tires. Everybody gets out of the car and they realize that their own tires are flat. At this point, the cop comes clean and explains that there's actually a manhunt in the area, but they're not sure what exactly they're dealing with. Lots of dead hikers have turned up earlier in the week. My friend remembers the strange photos and gets out his camera to show the cop. The cop's face suddenly goes blank and he hands back the camera. It's a photo that was taken inside the car the night before. Partially visible in the last photo, which is of my friend's sleeping face, like some kind of party photo where the taker holds the camera at arm's length to get himself in, is the right half of a pure white face with black holes for eyes and a mouth full of sharpened animal-like teeth. Finally get finished closely examining. Finally get finished closely examining all the cool. Ro Finally get finished closely examining, bro. Sleep like a little baby bitch. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Shit my ass as I. <laughs> Keegan was a first timer. Oh my goodness, hello. Can I help you? Oh my goodness. Yes, I love you too. Come on. Up, up, and away. Eee, boosh. Sounded like something laughing. Like a cackling noise. Kind of like a kick 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 <laughs> That's so retarded. No, I'm not doing that. Standing around for almost a minute before somebody whispers... Yeah, somebody whispered that, baby. Guys, I'm gonna go get my rifle. Hush. Yes, yes, can you hush? Don't, don't sit. No, don't, don't sit. What are you doing? Come on, keep going. Come on, full circle. And off the desk you go. Good job.